What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here as one rumor mill cranks to a halt, another one starts, it's grinding. What does the iPad 2 mean for the iPhone 5? Now I know what you're saying. John, iPad 2 was just announced. Stop with the rumors. Why are you talking about Apple? Well, my general rule of thumb is that if I get five emails in one day on a particular topic, I will make a video because it means a lot of you are interested in what the question is. This particular topic, I've received 10 emails on today from either the contact us link on Techno Buffalo or via YouTube PM. So I thought it'd be interesting to actually talk about on camera. Now there's been a ton of iPad 2 news coming out today and I understand if you're a little bit saturated on it. It's been tough to sort of look at any tech site, really anywhere, and not be sort of plastered with Apple news. Uh, Apple's a very polarizing company. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are right in the middle. So I want to give you guys a bit of disclaimer before you watch this video. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way and those that are continuing to watch are the ones that are actually curious, I think the iPad 2 actually gives a very good signal and hint as to what we can expect with the iPhone 5. Uh, the iPhone 5 and the iPhone in general has been on a, about a year-long release cycle since it was first released in 2007 with a new model coming out about every June, June-ish. Uh, let's just say. So right now we're in March, so we're at sort of the later end of the release cycle, about a quarter or so left to go before presumably we'll see a new iPhone 4. So what does the iPad 2 tell us about the iPhone? Well, we saw the A4 chip that powered the iPhone 4 debut first in the, I in the original iPad. Uh, so now we've got a new A5 chip, uh, which is dual core, gives you nine times the graphics capabilities and twice as fast and all that business. Uh, so chances are we're going to see that same A5 system on a chip architecture migrated over to the iPhone 5. So what that's going to mean is you're going to be able to export your videos much faster via the HDMI accessory which presumably will also make its way to the iPhone 5. The HDMI core that was announced today is backwards compatible with the iPhone 4, but it's only going to show video in 720p. Presumably the iPhone 5 will show the video in 1080p like the iPad 2 is capable of. We also saw the iPad 2 lose a lot around the waist. Um, obviously we will see the iPhone 5 get a little bit thinner, that one was a no-brainer, uh, but the percentage of thinness is pretty astounding. So right now the iPad 2 is actually thinner than what we see with the iPhone 4, and I've sort of got them both right here, and you can see the difference. You know, there's a little bit of a tapered edge, I don't know if you can see that right there with me, sort of glaring over the side. Uh, there's a bit of a tapered edge on the initial uh, iPad. Uh, it's more of a flat back now on the iPad 2. So we'll see the iPhone sort of lose a little bit in the thinness department. When it was first announced, it was the thinnest smartphone on the planet. It's since been eclipsed many times over by several Android devices and even, I believe, some Windows Phone 7 devices. Uh, we'll see an improvement in battery life. Apple was able to sort of up the specs of the iPad and still keep the 10-hour battery life. So hopefully that same battery technology will translate over to the iPhone 5. So the obvious things that we're going to see with an iPhone 5, and this sort of would have been a, probably in the, in the duh category, much like the cameras in the iPad 2, thinner, faster, better battery. Uh, what we're not going to see is just as interesting. Uh, we heard no mention of 4G LTE, either on AT&T's upcoming network or Verizon's already existing 4G LTE network. So I think we're going to miss out, unfortunately, on 4G in the iPhone 5, which I find extremely disappointing. What I'm really hoping for with the iPhone 5, and I've talked about this in many videos, uh, is a revamped iOS. We saw iOS 4.3 make its debut coming March 11th. What I'm hoping we're going to see in June or July timeframe is the debut of iOS 5 with a redesigned user interface. And I'm not going to get into my thoughts on iOS uh, right now, but suffice to say it's gotten very stale. If you want to know what I think more about it, there's a link down below where I talk about my thoughts on iOS. So again, like I was with the iPad, what I'm more interested in is the user experience and less about the raw hardware specs. Very curious to what you guys have to say. Or do you think that, am I missing anything? Do you think the iPad 2 is no correlation at all to the iPhone 5? Really, uh, I'm sort of interested to hear what you guys have to say. So leave your comments down below. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, 
and I'll see you in the next video. And I'll leave you with my eyebrow trick.